First on the air seven decades ago. Tonight, a look back at the memories from 70 years of Wood TV. Television 8 News presents the 11 p.m. report. From West Michigan's Team to Watch, this is News 8. Live from Wood TV 8, West Michigan's news leader. From the first team for news in West Michigan, this is News 8 at 6. First, best, live. Live from West Michigan's news leader, this is 24-Hour News 8. On air and online, West Michigan's news leader is 24-Hour News 8. Thank you for joining us on this special night. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Sturm. And I'm Susan Shaw. Seven decades of history here at Wood TV. Stories brought to you by dedicated journalists. Some of those legendary journalists recently reunited, sharing their memories of working together. Oh, it was friendly. <laughs> it was friendly. It really was. It's Tom it was. stirring the pot. I, there was that. It is Must See TV, and we'll show it to you in just moments. Right now, a trip down memory lane. We were the first station on the air in West Michigan in 1949. And that night started a trend of firsts here at Wood TV. This full page ad tells the story. TV is coming to town. We signed on the air as WLAV TV on Channel 7. That first broadcast was a gala event at Midtown Theater. An invite only group was inside. In the lobby, the overflow crowd watched along on TV for the very first time. And since most homes didn't have a television yet, people lined the sidewalk outside Herpelsheimer's department store downtown to watch on TVs in the windows. Two years later, Wood Radio bought WLAV-TV, giving us those legendary call letters, Wood TV. In 1953, we moved one slot up the dial, the Channel 8, to avoid interference with Channel 7 WLS-TV in Chicago. If you were around then, you may remember the phrase, mark the date, we moved the Channel 8 on December 8. The 50s featured several popular local shows, including 15 with Father, I'll be with you. Carol Duvall's Chick Chat, Ray's Roundup on Saturday nights, Leaning on the old top rail in the big corral. No, honey, and Buck Berry hit the airwaves in the 1950s, one of the first TV programs anywhere in the country to bring children of all races together on a TV show. So long now, Buckaroos. So long now. Hold on. In 1954, a first in West Michigan, Wood TV was one of just 21 stations in the country to air the Tournament of Roses parade in color. Throughout the 1960s, our news operation expanded, and for the first time, viewers watched video of major events happening across the world, including the riots in Detroit and in Grand Rapids. Fire and looting and mobs that rioted, but last night, the snipers took over. In the 1960s, we welcomed new team members who would become West Michigan favorites. Weatherman Buck Matthews, West Michigan's first female anchor, Tina Wilson, and sports director Warren Reynolds. Good evening, Warren Reynolds with a sports report. In the 1970s, we were the first station in West Michigan to own electronic news gathering equipment, helping us to bring you coverage of important events like Grand Rapids' own Gerald Ford being sworn in as president. President, are you prepared to take the oath of office as president of the United States? I am. The 70s also brought another name change, a federal ruling meant we had to change our call letters. This is TV8, WOTV Grand Rapids. The 1980s brought more firsts. In 1983, Chopper 8 became West Michigan's first news helicopter. A year later, News 8 Today premieres as the area's first early morning newscast. And many will remember Dick Evans traversing the state to bring unique stories back home to West Michigan. I'm Dick Evans on Michigan Road. The 80s ended with a return to dominance in the ratings. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Friday night. I'm Suzanne Jeha. And I'm Tom Van Hout. In the 1990s, the Wood TV name returned. From West Michigan's Team for the 90s, this is News 8. 
We expanded the noon news and the morning show grew from 30 minutes to two hours. Thursday morning on daybreak after In 1996, West Michigan's leading news website launched. And the way we do it in the 90s has been influenced by the changing technology. A good example is the internet. You can go online for news, weather and information on our website. We ended the millennium by being the first in West Michigan to broadcast in HD. In the 2000s, we added 8 West to the lineup and made the switch to DTV. Ken, let's go. Ready? Hit it. You see up there, the analog transmitter is no longer working right now. If you are still seeing us, you have absolutely no problems. In the past decade, our team of Target 8 investigators expanded, breaking big stories open like West Michigan's PFAS water crisis and the opioid epidemic. We've been the official broadcast media partner of Grand Rapids' biggest event, Art Prize, moving our newscast downtown and bringing you live coverage of the Art Prize Awards. As we're getting ready for the finish And one of our biggest technical undertakings in our seven decades, live start-to-finish coverage of the Riverbank Run, deploying dozens of cameras along and above the race. Our connection to the community continues to grow. This year, we celebrated 25 years of Miranda Park parties, bringing free family fun to hundreds of thousands of kids across West Michigan. West Michigan's first drone, Drone 8, took to the skies in 2015. And West Michigan's only 7 p.m. newscast launched in 2016. Hi, everybody. I'm Marley Ginter. Tonight at 7. In 2017, we built West Michigan's first permanent street-side studios in both downtown Grand Rapids and downtown Kalamazoo, giving you the chance to see our newscasts in action. First up at 5 o'clock. And this year, we launched the most technologically advanced studio West Michigan has ever seen at our headquarters in Heritage Hill. 70 years, thousands of employees. Right after this break, some of those legendary journalists are back. Names like Tom Van Howe, Craig James, Buck Matthews, all back home in our studio. Next, as we celebrate 70 years of Wood TV. Welcome back to our celebration of 70 years of Wood TV. We recently had the rare opportunity to gather some of our former colleagues and the conversation that ensued was filled with memories and laughs. We'll start with a look at who joined us. Matt McLogan was a political reporter, an assignment editor and news director during his tenure from 1972 to 1981. Andy Rent was here from 1969 to 1978. If you were around then, you'll remember him as Captain Woody on his afternoon children's program. Today, Andy remains on the radio at 100.5 The River. This year is his 50th year of broadcasting in West Michigan. Jane Brierly was here from 1976 to 1981. She was a pioneer, one of the early female news anchors, one of the first in West Michigan. She anchored the noon, the six, and the 11 newscasts and produced during her tenure at Wood TV. Jennifer Moss had two stints here at Wood TV as an anchor. She was here from 1987 to 1995 and again from 2002 to 2009. Buck Matthews was hired in 1961. During his more than two decades on the air here, he did the weather and hosted the popular Buck Matthews Show. Henry Irv is in his 49th year at Wood TV. He helped invent investigative reporting. All these years later, it's still usually bad news if he's knocking on your door. <laughs> <laughs> Storm to me, Chief Meteorologist Bill Steffen has 45 years of experience in West Michigan forecasting the weather. He's been here at Wood TV since 2001. Sports director Jack Doles has been here since 1990. He will be inducted into the Grand Rapids Sports Hall of Fame next month, and next year he will cover his 11th Olympic Games. Craig James was the first meteorologist on television in Grand Rapids when he arrived in 1973, and he worked here at Wood TV from 1985 to 2008. And finally, Tom Van Howe, anchor here really? at Wood TV from 1986 to 2006. Welcome all. Look at this. This is a Wood TV 8's fall lineup for 2019. Andy Rent, 50 years in the business here in West Michigan. Where is that puppet? <laughs> Sidney Steam Whistle uh, was his name. And uh, actually, I don't know. Uh, I know Dick Chilstrom was our puppeteer, uh, and he was a master puppeteer, too. He brought it to life. And it was a big puppet that it wore on your arm. 
uh, and he's since passed away, and I'm, one of his family members has it, but I wish we could find it. Sydney is, uh, is something special. Jane, um, how women have evolved in this industry. Um, one of the first female anchors in West Michigan. Tell us about your experience and what you've seen through the years as women have evolved in this, uh, in TV news and broadcasting in general that you've seen in West Michigan. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't think of myself as a woman. I thought of myself as a reporter. I had done radio news before I came here. So I was fairly terrified on that first day that I had to, to do the anchoring. Um, Kurt Fonger was in the seat next to me. And he said, let's do a mic check. Are they off? Jane, do a primal scream. <laughs> Which I did, and it really helped. So I think if, you, if we approached it just that it was a job that, that needed to be done, it didn't matter who did it. You just needed to do it well. And Matt, you wore so many hats here. You were uh, in the political reporter, even news director. What was easier, news director or political reporting? <laughs> well, interesting question because the political dynamic here changed so much when our local congressman, Jerry Ford, became vice president and then, of course, president. And so political reporting from 73 through about 76, 77 was the best gig imaginable. And Craig, you've been active still uh, in, in forecasting and whatnot. Bring us up to speed. What you been up to? Uh, a lot of goofing off. Uh, <laughs> Oh, we still host some tours. I used to do a lot of uh, rating of golf courses. Uh, I, the only forecasting I do is for me at home now. When we first started, I remember Bill, we hired Bill in 74. We had an old aircraft radar. If you remember, you can see the sweep go around and the you couldn't loop anything. Uh, we had to put an overlay over top of that scope so you could see what you were referring to. And now look at the radar and satellite loops. They're amazing the difference has taken place. Certainly, yeah, when it comes to life-saving technology, yeah. weather is advanced probably yeah, the amazing. most, has been the most impactful. Yeah. Those, those old weather shows were really boring. <laughs> Technology for sure. And Bill, yeah. you can speak and to we that had as well. a lot of time yeah. to fill. I had the yeah. entire five minutes at 725 and 825 yeah. with the state map, the national map, and a box right. of magic markers. And yeah. how do you fill five minutes worth of time and make it interesting for people? Buck, I know when we were looking at some of these pictures, uh, the memories that must just flood back. Tell us a little bit about what you're experiencing when you walk through the new studio. Well, first of all, sitting next to these two guys makes me feel like I ought to be in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, because I can tell you that when I was still on the air doing weather here, and these two were still on the air at Channel 13, 13 was running a promo the tagline of which was, three meteorologists are better than none. Uh, <laughs> I was the none they were talking about. What? That didn't come from us. And, That's cold. and I can't tell you that how it true? hurts me to, today to sit next to you guys. Jen, two times at Wood TV 8 and super busy still. Tell us what's going on with you. Well, right now I am still on radio now at uh, WGVU Public Media, working there, 88.5, doing that. Um, but, you know, just looking back at the time, it, we had so much fun. You know, Henry talked about us wanting to do good journalism, and that was at the core. And we always pushed each other, I think, to excel and to do better and do better. We used to compete for the lead story at 6. I didn't do it my first tour. A couple of folks that were here, Ernie Reno and some others, some of you may remember him as well. But we would, you know, you wanted to aspire to do the best that you could do. Following and looking at Tom Van Howe when I first got here, I was like, it was 1987-ish or so. Just the journalistic quality. I knew he was a good journalist, and all of us would look and say, "Well, what's Tom? How is Tom going to write that or do that?" I mean, we were learning because I just come in from Lansing. A lot of us came from Lansing, uh, you know, coming from the hundredth market to the thirtieth something. You really wanted to succeed and excel when you got here. So we had, and we had a lot of fun. It was a lot of family right. time. I mean, this we was did. like a family. It was intense. It was. It, it was. There's an intense pressure that comes along with this job, but the, you, you you blow off steam with your colleagues uh, sometimes in those moments on air, off air, in between commercial breaks. And I know that uh, Tom and Sue and Craig and Jack, when you guys were running the show, there were, you guys were jousting a little bit there on the air, maybe to the point where it seemed like maybe it wasn't friendly. <laughs> oh, it was friendly. Oh, it was friendly. Uh, it really was. It's Tom was. stirring the pot. I, there was that. There was that. He, was. he wanted to keep you on your toes and make yeah. sure you weren't, you yeah. know, feeding him uh, some nonsense. Yeah. Uh, he liked to provoke. I remember a live shot I was doing first, my very first year here, 
something was happening with the train track and the, the alarm wasn't going off at the tracks. Throw it back to Tom and he says, Brian, that's a hell of a way to run the railroad. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I don't Yes, know. sir. <laughs> I don't think so. He said, I don't think so. <laughs> All those pictures along that, that huge wall and all of those memories, it's, it's amazing to listen to a lot of you talk about the pictures and what it was like at the time. And what is it like when you see some of those pictures, Henry, in the oh. investigative world and all of the people that you've worked with? Well, it brings back so many memories of so many good people that we've, we've worked with here, you know. And also looking at those folks uh, makes me think about how this station has always cared about journalism. It's always cared about excellent reporting. And a lot of those people uh, in, in those pictures have gone on to network news. They've gone into newspapering. Some of them have come out of newspapering, like Van Howier, for example. Right. A lot of people don't know, but he worked, he worked with Miami Herald for a while. Mm -hmm. And so we've always been a, a, a television station which cared about the craft of journalism. That was definitely uh, one of the impressions I had when I first walked through the doors here back in the mid-90s. Just the the legacy of the news operation that was known not only in Michigan but the people around the country was oh you work at Wood TV and just to see Tom come in and sully all of this with sandals on his feet today <laughs> what happened to you man he was wearing these when he worked yeah. here <laughs> he hasn't changed a bit right. oh come now <laughs> you were probably in your best element at that live at five show when you guys were live remote you know what that four was four a four. great that was a great thing to be doing <laughs> but if you think about going out every day with two shooters and creating a half hour show from nothing I had nightmares about it. <laughs> and my biggest recurring nightmare was I came out of the van where we edited on location and, uh, and I came out of the van looking for everybody to be in place. And there was George Marcheski, there was Kenny Jones. And I said, where are the cameras? And they said, you didn't tell us we had to have cameras. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I'd wake up in a sweat. <laughs> yeah, it all looked so smooth and as if it had been rehearsed many times. But, yeah, but it was just so free-flowing, and you guys looked like you were having a great time. Well, but isn't it the way TV is anyway? Yeah. The, the anchors look relaxed, and uh, the live shot guy is, is relaxed, and everybody's doing what they do well, and it just looks so easy. And meanwhile, back in the control room, uh, people are yelling and swearing at each other. Yes. And, uh, Smoke and is coming out. <laughs> no one knows. Yeah. Right, no one. They don't no know. But I don't, I don't think there are a lot of people that could have pulled that show off the way you did. Well, uh, it was interesting. It was thanks, fun. Jack. That's yeah. very kind of you to say. Yeah. A lot of fun to watch, yeah. for sure. And Can I tell a story about Tom Van Howe on Live at Five? <laughs> uh -oh. uh, we'll right back. <laughs> you may want to edit this out. I don't know. I remember when Tom interviewed his wife because she was head of the Holland Tulip Parade oh, yeah. at the festival. Oh, yeah. And he said at the end of the show, I'm going to ask this woman if I can get her to go home with me. <laughs> and the phone started to ring off the wall. Has he lost his mind? <laughs> he lost his mind? <laughs> Actually, it was a little more direct than that. I said, if she plays her cards right, I'm going to sleep with her. That's you. right. That's <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> he said that on the air. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the 90s. No, the 90s. <laughs> Most tense exchange, Henry. Anything stick in your mind as far as uh, your encounters out in the field? Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, you know, it happens every now and then, but not that often as you might fear. I mean, I, I always worry about it uh, to some degree. Uh, you know, I've had uh, people... Uh, fortunately, the camera guy is usually first, right? right. They come after the camera. <laughs> they make good cover. And so, so I hide behind the... No, I don't. Uh, so one time I found myself propping up my cameraman because the other guy was pushing him, trying to push him over. I mean, that stuff just happens from time to time, and, and you know, you just kind of live with it. It, it doesn't happen that often. Right. Uh, and, but, but, it's, but you do get testy exchanges. I mean, I get doors slammed in my face uh, uh, quite a bit, and uh, some people just don't open the door, but but I've had, you know, the other doors go, wham! That's so, right. so. You got that rep. And I try to explain, I'm really a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, your contributions have been significant, no doubt about that. Yeah, the investigative through the something? years. Sure. I don't think there's probably in the whole country a television reporter that got into the business to do long-form investigative stuff, and he's still at it. Mm -hmm. And if I can find a reporter that's done what you've done, I'd be very surprised. 
I think it's really an achievement. It's been a long ride. It's been fun, too. Yeah. It's just really something. It's great. And I know as I'm putting the sports cast together, I'm usually kind of focused. And I'll have two, three, four TVs on. But every time I hear Henry's voice, I stop and I look up. Exactly. <laughs> and I go, oh, this ought to be good. <laughs> so, what is about yeah. to happen? Yep. <laughs> no, it's been proud to have you working here all these years, Henry. It's sure. represent this place great. We're all extremely lucky to be in a position to have done what we did. And for those of you still doing it, my hat is off to you. Because I miss it. But I'm determined to say that I left it for good. <laughs> that was a blast. It was so fun to talk to all of those people and all that they've contributed through the years. Really, it is that wonderful sense of family. So much more. That's just a portion of our hour-long conversation together. You can see it all right now on woodtv.com. Also online, Ellen Baca sits down with the weathermen to talk about some of the most memorable storms through the years. And Marley Ginter, bless her, she interviewed Sue and I to take a look back at our 25 years together here at Wood TV. You can see that story now on woodtv.com. Right after the break, a classic promo from 1986 gets a remake. We'll unveil it next as we celebrate 70 years of Wood TV. Now to help celebrate our 70th anniversary, we're remaking one of our favorite all-time promos. The original is from 1986, and we've spent the past several weeks recreating it shot by shot. Here it is, the debut of the new We're Your Team promo. We're your team. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was great. Wow, that's cheesy. <laughs> it took a while to put that together and uh, have everybody yeah. go in sync. I've got to watch one. that again. Yeah. And it, if you'd like to see that video again, we do have it posted at woodtv.com. We hope that you'll join us every week for Throwback Thursday, too. We're dusting off old tapes to bring back legendary storyteller Dick Evans on the Michigan Road. We will re air one of Dick's stories every Thursday on News 8 at 5. Thank you for joining us tonight and for your loyal viewership throughout the years. Have a wonderful night.